Before we get into catalog settings, even though we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit here, let me talk about catalogs. To me, catalogs are the heart of this program. Catalogs do something. They hold the photographic information in order to get to all of your images. So when you see something like what's going on here with all these different photographs, they are in this catalog. Now the catalog is named up here, Andy's Cool Stuff, and it's named LRCAT. That's its extension. The photographs aren't really there. It's holding information on a sense where to get them, if you want to look at it that way, I suppose. And down here, I have two folders. So the catalog is the main construct for all of your images, and you can then have other folders inside of that catalog. Now, some people work and operate with one catalog. That's not me. I don't like that. I've got catalogs, say, for wedding photos, or I've got a catalog for night photography, because I do a lot of night photography. To me, I like being able to separate in kind of like broad stroke terms. But I do have a gentleman that I work with, and he has like 325,000 photographs in one catalog. I think he's crazy. Let's go up to the word Lightroom on the pull-down menu if you're in Mac. If you're in Windows, go to the word Edit, and we're going to go down to Catalog Settings. Let's go ahead and start with the general preferences. Now, there's not a lot here. It's telling you what you've done. I've created a catalog, and the catalog is called Andy's Cool Stuff, and it's telling me where it is. It's on the desktop. I can click Show. If I do and I'm in Windows, it will open it up in Explorer. If I'm on a Mac, it'll open it in the Finder. So if I don't know where it is, I want to see it. There it is. It tells me when it was created, last backed up, last optimized. In my case, neither. And its size. Now, the backup here, to me, is kind of important. How often do you want to do this? Because remember, if you have a problem, a corrupted file, something happens, the backup can help you restore at least from the last backup. It's up to you when you want to do it. I'll leave that up to you. Let's go to file handling. In file handling, you have a standard preview size. In my opinion, the preview size shouldn't be any bigger than the resolution of your monitor. That doesn't make sense. I use a 1440, so I'll go ahead and change that. Preview quality, I like leaving that at medium. Again, it's a preview. It has nothing to do with anything except what you see on the screen. Preview is fine, and you want to discard your previews after so much time. And what that means is it's going to build these one-on-one -on -one previews as you work, and some people like to get rid of those after so often. I usually don't, so I change that to never. Down here, we have the number system it's going to use when it begins numbering imported images. Let's go to metadata right here. Now, what is that? Metadata is information on the file. Its name, when it was taken, if you've got GPS data, it would be the location shot. Things like the f-stop, the ISO, all that information and a ton more, that's metadata. You can see some of it right over here in this area. If you want to, you can have the computer offer suggestions from recently entered values. Like, for example, you're typing in something into metadata, it thinks it knows the word, and it starts putting the word or gives you choices from that point. It's kind of like Microsoft Word, where it'll go in for you and say, well, I think I know this word, so here it is. Now, if you get a little bit too much in there or you don't like what you've got in there, you can clear that anytime you want to by clicking over here. Now, over here, we have Include Develop Settings and Metadata Inside the JPEG, TIFF, and PSD files. If you deselect this option, it prevents Lightroom from including develop module settings inside of the XMP data of the JPEGs, TIFFs, and PSDs. That's all that does. Automatically write changes into XMP. Now, you would select that option to save the metadata changes directly into what's called the XMP sidecar file. It's a file that holds this information. And it makes those changes visible in other applications. You turn that off if you don't want that to happen. Now, next down here, we have the geocoding. I mean, the new GPS feature, which is kind of cool, the mapping. You can reverse geocode the GPS coordinates to provide address suggestions, and you can reverse it to give you suggestions anytime an address field is empty. And then the last one is write date or time changes into proprietary raw files. What that does is it controls whether Lightroom writes a new date and time to the proprietary raw files when you use the metadata. To me, I don't like that. I like the original in there, so I leave that off. All of these things here, 
are based on, and this is important, all of these changes are based on this particular catalog that I am in. If I decide I want another catalog, and we'll do this a little bit later, I go right here and say new catalog. I give it a name, I tell it where it wants, but guess what? All of the options go back to the defaults. There are not any proprietary preferences for catalog settings. You want to remember that. So if you're saying, I never want you to get rid of my one-on-one -on -one previews, and you make a new library, it's actually going to go back to 30 days. you got to watch that. There you go. Catalog settings. On to the next.